morning grade of the trip from the WCA TV studio. I'm Jenna Lewis alongside Coco Toscano. Coming up in today's show, the deadline to sign up for the reverse roles game is today, and our sports broadcasting students have another episode of Wildcat All, Ac All Access. All this and more on your WCA TV news. This week is a holiday spirit week. Today is ugly sweater versus flannel, and Thursday is holiday pajamas. Be sure to participate and get into the holiday spirit. The Interact Club is sponsoring the annual Reverse Rules Basketball Game on March 15th. Volunteers are needed to help with the event, to play basketball, and to be cheerleaders. Be sure to check your email for a link to the Google form to sign up. The deadline is today. Let's get a check on the weather. We go to Sophia Boulevard for your three-day forecast. Good morning, Wildcats. Today we're looking at a high of 33 with a low of 21 along with sunny skies. Tomorrow, temperatures will range from a high of 38 to a low of 22 with cloudy skies. Friday, expect a high of 39 and a low of 26 with sunny skies. That's the 3-day forecast. Thanks and back to you. Wondering what's on the menu today? Here's JJ Amaroth with What's Cooking. What's Cooking, Latrobe? Today is Wednesday, December 20th, and in the workshop we have Texas Toasted Cheese Sandwich with Tomato Soup and Cheddar Cheese Crackers. The soup of the day is homemade chili. That's what's cooking. Thanks and back to you. Thanks, JJ. We go to Brianna Vesley for an update on our Wildcat sports teams. Good morning, Wildcats. Last night, the boys' basketball team took on Wheeling Central Catholic at home, where they were defeated 66-45 to in a non-section matchup. The JV team was victorious, and Jacob Kramer had the chance to talk to Ty Wisniewski after the game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Ty Wisniewski, uh, freshman on the basketball team. Ty Wiz, uh, you came off the bench, but um, before that, number two was number two on the other team was doing pretty good. He was getting getting a few buckets. How do you come off the bench with that energy to stop him? Uh, you know, just coming off the bench, playing as hard as I can, defense, um, assisting my teammates, and, you know, just trying to stop them in any way I can, so. Thank you, Ty. Yep. And reporting for WCAT TV, I'm Jacob Kramer. Thanks, Jacob. Tonight, the swim team has a meet against Bethel Park at 5. Also, anyone interested in playing girls soccer this winter into next year should attend a meeting today during GL Time Block B and S202. 9th and 10th graders can bring their lunch with them to the meeting. That's all for local sports. Now here's Michael Vito with the national sports. Thanks, Brianna. Good morning, Wildcats. Yesterday, the Pirates announced that they were re-signing Andrew McCutcheon to a one-year, $5 million deal. Kutch sits at 299 home runs in his MLB career. Tomorrow, the Pens take on the Carolina Hurricanes at 7 p.m. Finally, on Saturday, the Steelers take the field to battle the Cincinnati Bengals at 4.30. That's all for national sports. Thanks and back to you. Now here is Dalton King with entertainment news. In 2008, DreamWorks released the first Kung Fu Panda movie, which received positive views overall. Now, 15 years later, DreamWorks has announced the fourth movie in the franchise, Kung Fu Panda 4. Jack Black returns to his role as Poe, the lovable Kung Fu warrior, as he takes on his biggest challenge yet. He must fight a new character named the Chameleon, played by Viola Davis while training the new dragon warrior, Zen, played by Aquafina. Join Poe on his funniest and most action-packed adventure so far. The movie will be released March 8, 2024. Back to you in the studio. Reporters Louis Citro, Tyler Webster, and Allison Lippert took to the halls for today's Kid in the Hall. My favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard. My favorite Christmas movie is The Nightmare Before Christmas. My favorite Christmas movie is Elf. My favorite Christmas movie would have to be uh, Die Hard. My favorite Christmas movie is Home Alone 2. I like A White Christmas with uh, Bing Crosby and the gang, but of course the best Christmas movie is Die Hard. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of WCAT TV News. Have a great day, Lutra. We are Geo. Go Wildcats. We hope you have a wonderful holiday break. Stay tuned for Wildcat All Access. Good morning, Greater Latrobe. Welcome to the Wildcat All Access, where we bring you news from all of our Greater Latrobe Wildcat teams. I'm your host, Gabby Cunningham. The Ice Cats are having a solid season right now with a 9-2 record. 
Here's Michael Vito with the story. The Ice Cats started their season off strong, beating Franklin Regional 4-3 in a shootout on October 2nd, then were blanked 3-0 by Hempfield on the 5th. On the 12th, the boys defeated North Hills by a score of 4-1. On the 16th, they beat Penn Trafford 5-2. Then the boys traveled to the Ice Castle to face off with Thomas Jefferson on October 26th, where they suffered just their second loss of the season with a final score of 7-3. Heading into November, the Ice Cats took the ice against Armstrong on the 2nd. Led by senior captain Louis Amatucci's three-point effort and freshman Joey Crimboli's two-point night, two-goal night, the Cats easily won 6-1. Against Bishop McCord on the ninth, Joey Crimboli scored early in the first, followed by junior Robert Rossi early in the second. Bishop McCord would answer with two goals of their own before junior Dylan Morris and sophomore Cam Mikulski would give the Wildcats a 4-2 lead, which would stand for the rest of the night. After a long break, the Cats were back in action on the 20th at North Hills. A four-point night from Joey Crimboli, including a hat-trick, along with goals from junior Jackson Hayburn, senior Jacob Hanna, and Robert Rossi would propel the Cats to a 6-1 victory. In their final game in November, the boys took on Norwin at home. They fell behind in the first, but got a, a, a tying tally from junior Caleb Trice. Norwin took the lead back, but the Cats were able to tie it with a goal from Cam Mikulski. Finally, just 53 seconds into overtime, Louis Amatucci scored the winner to give the Cats a 3-2 win. Finally, last Thursday, the Cats had a rematch with Hempfield. There were no goals until the third period, but the Cats broke the ice with a power play goal from Jacob Hanna. 13 minutes later, Leitro would add another power play tally coming from Dylan Morris. Lastly, Joey Crimboli put the game away and the Cats won 3-1. Their next game is Thursday the 21st at home against Thomas Jefferson. Thanks, Michael. The girls' basketball team has high expectations this season. Here's Violet Dice with an update. The girls' basketball team started off the season strong in the River Valley tip-off tournament. Facing Richland at the start, the Cats dominated with a 67-47 win. Ali Snyder led with 15 points, with Carly Burke and Belle Blossie not far behind. The following night, the Cats faced River Valley in the tournament championship game. The game started off close, and the ladies ended the second quarter with a 28-26 lead over the Panthers. The Cats continued fighting and ended the game with a 67-49 championship win. Ali led the game with 29 points and was named the MVP of the tournament. Belle Blossie was also recognized, being named an all-tournament team player. For the team's first home game, they faced Indiana. The Lady Cats put up a fight, but the game ended in a 49-44 loss for the Cats. Ali Snyder and Addison Toy led in points, and Belle Blossie led in steals for the team. The Cats then traveled to Norwin to face the Knights. The team ended the first quarter with a two-point lead, but could not manage to regain their leading position. The game ended with a 59-36 loss. Returning home, the Lady Wildcats took on Oakland Catholic for their first section game. The girls played hard but ultimately lost 67 to 44. Monday, the Wildcats headed to McKee Sport to face the Tigers in another section matchup. The Cats lost 71 to 45. The ladies will continue working hard to prepare for their next games at the holiday tournament at home. Thanks, Violet. Staying on the hardwood, Jack Sacrapani has an update on the progress of the boys basketball team. The boys basketball team started the season with a dominant 60 to 30 win over Richland with big games from Max Butler and Jaton Williams. They then traveled to Morgantown and suffered their first loss of the year, 111-49. The Cats dropped a close game to Norwin, 63-58. Max Butler had 18 points. The boys got back in the win column against Quaker Valley in a 68-61 win. Jaton Williams led the Cats with, 30, with 22 points, along with great performances from Max Butler and Darius Davis. Last Friday, the boys hosted Dubois and won 64-57. Max Butler and John Wetzel led Latrobe in scoring. We will recap the Wheeling Central Catholic game in our next episode. Over the break, the Cats are traveling to New York for a tournament. Good luck to the team. Thanks, Jack. The girls' swimming and diving team is off to a great start. Here's Savannah Repack with the story. Thanks, Gabby. On November 29th, the girls' swimming and diving team hosted Mount Pleasant for a scrimmage where they defeated the Vikings. In the winter tri-meet against Hampton and Indiana, the team finished 1-1. One one. After, de after defeating Hampton 115-70, the Cats fell to Indiana 83-103. On December 6th, the team hosted Penn Hills in an 84-46 win. Though in a meet against Plum on the 12th, the girls were closely defeated with a score of 95-88. The team made a comeback when they defeated Greensburg-Salem 88-64. Top finishers in swimming from the meets were Destiny Homan, Matilda Price, Hannah Caracia, Maggie Elder, Lauren Bell, Michaela Golden, Addison Bush, and Kate Wolford. 
with diving top places from Rachel Lomani, Giada Angelico, Maria Thunberg, and Lily Cowan. Tonight, the team takes on Bethel Park at home at 5. Thanks, Savannah. The boys' swimming and diving team had two meets on December 1st, starting the day off by defeating Hampton with a score of 100-74, to with multiple swimmers winning first place, including Charlie Thompson, who placed first in the 500 free and the 100 free, which were qualifying times. In the team relays, they placed first in all of them and had Whippeal qualifying scores. In the boys' second match up of the day, they fell to Indiana by a score of 115-70. to The team still placed first in the 200 medley relay, and Charlie Thompson placed first in the 500 free. In the boys' next meet, they faced off against Penn Hills, defeating them 86-45, to with the team placing first in each relay. Chris Hess placed first in the 500 free, and Ethan Stranger placed first in diving, both having Whippeal qualifying scores. The boys then defeated Plum by a score of 94-82. to The team once again placed first in each team relay, with Patrick Craddy placing first in the 100 butterfly, and Chris Hess placing first in the 100 free and in the 100 backstroke both swimmers having Whippeal qualifying scores. The Cats' last meet was against Greensburg-Salem, defeating them with a score of 83-44. to The team took first in almost every event, with Charlie Thompson and Chris Hess both taking three first-place finishes. The boys' next meet is tonight against Bethel Park at 6 p.m. Moving to the mat, we go to Luke Bullabosch with an update on the wrestling team. Thanks, Gabby. On December 9th, the wrestling team traveled to Trinity for the Trinity Duels. In the quarterfinals, they beat Central Valley with a team score of 45 to 27, and seven Latro wrestlers recorded pins. In the semifinals, the Wildcats beat Erie Cathedral Prep with a score of 33 to 28. Five Latro wrestlers pinned their opponents in the matchup. In the finals against Trinity, Greater Latrobe lost with a team score of 43 to 24. Luke Willishell, Chase McIntyre, and Marco Scarden each got a pin in the loss. On Friday, December 15th, the boys traveled to Central Mountain for the King of the Mountain tournament. As a team, the Wildcats placed 7th out of 32 teams. As individuals, Leo Joseph and Jacob Braun placed 5th in their weight classes. Hunter Snyder lost 3rd place, and Luke Willishell got a pin in the championship finals. Finally, the team traveled to Derry on Tuesday, where they fell to the Trojans 31-25. The team travels to McKeesport tomorrow for their next match. Thanks, Luke. The girls wrestling team has been working hard as they begin their first season. Here's Mia Klasnick with the story. The girls wrestling team placed third overall at their first tournament, coming up short to first place winner Hickory and second place winner Sagertown. Miranda Cantoris placed first for overall individuals. Marin Zangaro and Liz Cantoris placed second. Lily Maxwell and Lexi Cunningham placed third and Liz Wilson and Rowan Lewis placed fourth. The girls next tournament is at Bishop McCord on December 23rd. Thanks Mia. The bowling team is off to a good start. In their match against Penn Trafford, both teams easily defeated the Warriors, knocking down a total of 5,209 pins. Caitlin Kirchner and Robbie Phillips bowled the high series for each team. The team then went on to defeat Greensburg Central Catholic, knocking down a total of 4,991 pins. Regina Zezza had the high game for the girls with 216. Robbie Phillips also claimed the high games for the boys with a score of 288. The teams then went on the road to face Greensburg Salem at Maine. The girls' team won their match with ease, but the boys faced a challenge. They won their first game, however, fell short for their second and third games, ultimately losing to the Lions by a single spare. Things didn't improve last week over their match against Hemfield, where both the boys and girls lost their matches. However, even after these losses, Robert Phillips is ranked third in the East Southeast region with an average of 213 pins per game. Caitlin Kirchner is ranked third for the girls with an average of 179. Both teams look to turn things around when they head into matches after the new year. We go to Brogan Murphy for an update on the Wildcat Den. Hey Wildcat fans, the Wildcat Den traveled to Kirkus Neman Arena for the Hemfield vs. Lake Charm rematch on December 14th. The Wildcats took on the dub with a score of 3-1, to one, with three match win evening the record this season against Hemfield. The theme for the boys basketball game on December 15th was whiteout. The boys basketball team beat the boys 64-57. Last night's den theme was Christmas. The den theme for the hockey game on Thursday is Ugly Sweater. Have a good holiday, break Wildcats, and be sure to come out and support your Wildcat teams. Best of luck to all of our sports teams. Thanks for joining us for Wildcat All Access. Let's go Cats!